Welcome everyone, good evening slash afternoon. Um, my name is Janet Farrer, I'm President-elect of UCU uh, and I chair the National Further Education Committee, UK Further Education Committee, um, and I also teach trade union education at the Manchester College. Uh, so I'm going to be chairing this event, very excited to be chairing this event, I'm like a small child after all. Um, I was a facilitator on the last strike school, the, the last organising for power course, and anyone who knows me knows that I am a proper strike school enthusiast. Uh, I learned so much on the last one and I, I really can't wait for this one to start. So before I get too excited, let me talk you through some practicalities. Um, so this will be streaming live on uh, UCU's YouTube channel uh, and also on the Facebook uh, and the Twitter. If you require captions, um, you can do that via the Facebook platform. And of course, you may have noticed, I'm delighted to, to be joined by Pri, who is our uh, British Sign Language interpreter. And uh, I would just remind all of our speakers to try and speak uh, at a reasonably slow pace uh, so that uh, everybody can access the information. Um, one more thing, I think, in practical terms is uh, if you have any questions, um, you can submit them in the comments either on the YouTube, um, just on the comments there, or in, or also on Twitter or on, on Facebook, and they'll all come through to us, and we should be able to have some time at the end to take those questions. You might find that lots of your questions are answered, but uh, please keep them coming in, uh, and if we haven't covered anything, then we can definitely put those up. So we will be finishing promptly at 6pm. We've got lots to pack in, so I'm going to uh, gonna crack on, I suppose. Um, so just a, a couple more words about, about organising for power and about Strike School. Um, Nick and Joe are going to explain um, what it's all about. But, you know, I would really love to take this opportunity, exploit this opportunity, some people might say, uh, to really put a plug in for our FE um, prison education and adult education members. You know, anyone who's on, or who's on the call or hopefully you can share this afterwards and people will be able to view it then. It's really great if we can have a range of participants from all of our sectors and, you know, if you really buy into it, I can promise you it will absolutely revolutionise the way that you that you run your branches um, and how you organise within your branches. You know, and clearly we're working at the minute, for those who don't know, um, in um, the FE Pay campaign, we're working on, at the minute we've just opened our consultative ballot so that's the context that we're working in and of course we've got some of our prison members uh, in Novus who are actually engaged in an industrial dispute at the minute so for all of those reasons and more um, it'd be great for you to sign up with your branch. Okay right I'll, I'll probably stop talking there and I'm going to introduce our first speakers who are uh, Nick Hardy who used to be a UCU member and activist but now works for UCU and leads on our Organising for Power programme. And we should also hopefully be joined by our General Secretary, Joe Grady. And there she is, live from Carlo Street, which is our head office, which is very exciting. So uh, I'll hand over to Nick and Joe there. Thanks, Janet. Thanks, um, Janet. Joe, you're going to start, aren't you? And then I'll, I'll do a couple of minutes. I'll come back in a couple of minutes' time. Yeah, so I just wanted to um, echo a lot of what Janet just said, actually, um, but just give a little bit of a brief intro um, into what this course is all about. So this is part of a series of an organising for power um, educational course by Jane McAlevey, who some of you may even be aware of. You may have her books on your bookshelf. Um, she is an American trade unionist. Um, we took part, UCU took part in, um, most recently in this course in autumn last year. We put 400 activists from prison education, further education and adult education through that course. Um, the NEU, our sister union um, who were in this call with us, they have also put their activists through this course as well. Um, 
And we were joined globally by 4,000 other union activists around the world. So this isn't just UK trade unions. This isn't just UK education trade unions. There were workers from every corner of the globe covering lots of different sectors um, from mining through to education. Um, and it was a really good opportunity to get back to basics, actually, to strip away a lot of the day to day aspects of your working lives and see how organizing has real commonalities across the globe, um, across really different types of contexts, and how when you actually strip those things back, building communities, building networks, and ultimately building power has a family resemblance wherever you are. Um, what Janet just said has been echoed by so many people who took the course last year. So as I say, there was 400 UCU activists who took this course. We had overwhelmingly positive feedback from people who took it. And that has just been since the autumn. So I just wanted to draw attention to one branch in particular, which is um, the University of Northumbria's UCU branch. They put um, a group through this training course in the autumn. And they were the first union branch in the UK, not even the first UCU branch, but the first union branch in the UK to run a successful health and safety COVID ballot. Absolutely huge, groundbreaking, record breaking. And when you look at what they did and their, their branch reps have talked to our other UCU activists in other meetings that we've had, they put into practice the principles that they learned in the organizing course that they did in the autumn. They were able to keep their members and by extension, the university community that they work in safe during a global pandemic because of the principles they had learned several months earlier on this organizing course. That is the transformational power that is delivered to your fingertips if you invest the time to learn the principles, but also to organize on the ground to bring people with you. Um, they're not the only branch um, that have been putting the principles that they've learned from organizing school into practice. Our prison members have been doing the same. Um, but I just wanted to really flag that because obviously they did this amazing thing with their ballot. Before I hand back over to Nick, I just wanted to say two key things really. Um, because this course is about teaching you skills and principles. Um, and it does that in two main ways, really. Um, the first is it tells you how to grow your union, our union, or the NEU, um, if you're here from, from that union. Um, and it primarily talks to you about how you recruit new members, how you bring people in, how you identify things that people care about, and how you communicate that to them. Um, and how you ultimately increase what we call our density. So that's the amount of people that are in our union. Um, and how we ideally want more than half of people who could be in our union in our union. Because um, when we've got bigger density, um, we've got more people that we are bargaining on behalf of and we can you know, make stronger claims to management and because we've got more people to support us. And then the second thing is well, when you've got those people in your union, when you've got your density at more than 50 percent, how do you get them and how do you get even more of them? And how do you get them to participate in the things that you need them to participate in to be a successful branch? So in Northumbria, you know, they put the principles into practice in terms of um, doing petitions, which are types of structure tests to see how many people support a campaign to learn things about what they might need to do more to bring people on board and so on. So I'm not going to say too much about it because you've got more of that coming, but it's essentially a really engaging course. If you don't know Jane, she is like a shot of adrenaline and um, she's a, a great teacher and she's also got the skills to back it up because she's been organizing for decades and she knows what it's like to organize in a, a, a you know, kind of a hostile terrain and with aggressive employers. Um, so she's not about making excuses up for not getting stuff done. She is a getting stuff done woman and we are a getting stuff done union. So um, that's all I'm going to say, really. I know Nick's got other things that he wanted to say. Um, so thank you to everyone who's taking part this evening. Um, I know it's been a lot of work. And if you haven't signed up, if you haven't found friends in your branch to sign up, do. This isn't just for branch reps, you know, in your department, in the corridor that you work in, get together with people. Um, you can build power in small groups, in big groups, um, but you need to start learning the principles to do that. Thanks, Nick.
Thanks, Joe. Um, I'm just going to talk through a few um, practical details of the course um, for those of you who are interested in joining. And I'm going to try to share some slides um, to do that. So, yeah, hopefully, looks like everyone can see. Yeah, so the course is breaking, broken down into five parts, really, but spread over six sessions. Um, and the first thing it's going to take you through is what they call leader identification. And what that really is, is when you're looking at your workplace and your colleagues and whether they're union members already or not, who are the people that you need on your side because everyone else in your workplace really trusts them? Who are the people who can move other people? when you're talking about you know, preparing for a collective action, whether it's a strike or whatever else, because they're, they're trusted in the workplace. And it teaches you some really good techniques for working that out and understanding the fundamental kind of principles of why you would wanna do that in the first place. Now, the second thing that the course deals with is semantics. So that's like the words you choose when you're talking about um, the actions that you want people to take um, or, um, trying to find out what the issues are that motivate them. It's about how to talk about the union without making the union sound like it's a separate thing from just people in the workplace coming together to achieve things. Um, there's going to be a lot of emphasis on the third bullet point, conversations. That's presented as a really fundamental part of the job of organising um, you know, in your union branches, in your workplace, and especially on one-on-one -on -one conversations. Basically, how do you talk to and reach out to and um, try to understand the motivations of people who don't necessarily even agree with you, people who aren't already on board with what the union is doing, and how you basically help build a consensus and um, come to an agreement and get people on side with what needs to be done. Um, then there's also a component of the course that looks at charting, or as we tend to call it in a UCU context, I don't know what term that NEU would use, mapping the workplace. So basically, how do you look at um, where in the workplace you have a lot of members, where you don't have a lot of members, um, who is in, who is out of the union, what kind of information you can gather about them, where do you need to do extra work, basically, before you're ready to put together a really strong campaign and then the last thing that the course deals with but one of the most important is what they call structure tests um, and that's basically kind of smaller scale campaign actions that you you want to get all of your members to do as a way of preparing yourself um, and yourselves as a branch for and building towards uh, you know ultimately uh, the biggest and most powerful action that a union branch can take, which is industrial action. So it might be, you know, a good example of a structure test might be a petition, which is only for people in your workplace to sign, and you try to get as many people to sign it as you can. You see who has signed it and who hasn't, and you treat that as a test of your readiness and your levels of organisation. Um, and I'm just gonna move on to close with some even more mundane kind of practical details, but for people um, who are thinking seriously about, about doing the course. So the first thing to say about it is it's completely free. It's free to everyone who takes it. Um, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, it starts on the 18th of May and it runs for six successive sessions, finishing on the 22nd of June. Um, from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, UK time every Tuesday. Um, the sessions, they're not just, it's not just like a lecture, like you hear someone talking to you about what to do for two hours. They're, they're very interactive and kind of hands-on. So for each session, there will be breakout rooms where you basically split into smaller groups. And I know if you're a UCU member, we're going to put you in groups with, other members from your branch and maybe from your region or sector, um, starting with the groups that you yourself sign up in. I think the NEU are doing something similar. And you'll be working together on exercises, problems, and you'll actually be encouraged to bring kind of 
materials that you have that are directly relevant to your own organizing, like in your branch or in your workplace, and bring those to the course and actually work on them as part of the course. So it's completely practical in that sense. Um, you'll, you've also got kind of homework exercises that you'll be given um, as part of the course materials in between each session. Um, in UCU, we'll definitely be making arrangements for you to get together as a group um, and do those if you've got time. Um, again, for UCU members, we will reimburse you for childcare costs um, if that's something that's going to help you do the course because we think that's really important. Um, you need to register as a group. So if you use our registration form, um, you can actually only do it if you register in a group. You can't register as an individual. That's really important because you need to start, we want you to start with a kind of critical mass of people who have already got together and decided they want to do this course together and work, then go on to work together on whatever it is in their branch um, or in their sector um, that they want to do in terms of organizing. So it's very important to sign up, even if it's just to get. Uh, you know, a few of your uh, friends and colleagues together. That's really important. Um, so I'm going to stop there. That's all the kind of practical stuff. And I'm just really looking forward to hearing from um, uh, some UCU and any new speakers about, you know, what they've what they've learned on the back of the course. Um, and back over to Janet. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, the technology seems to be working fine. So far, so good. Uh, thanks to you and to Joe uh, for that really clear introduction to what, what this involves. And we do think it's important that people understand what it involves because um, we've we're experts now. We've done it once, so we know we know exactly what's coming um, and we know how, how brilliant it is. So um, before I bring in the next speaker, just a reminder that um, if you do have any questions, uh, they can be practical or otherwise, um, then you can put those in the comments, however you're viewing this, um, this session. All right. So our next speaker, delighted to introduce Kitty Howarth. Um, who was a, a UCU activist at Nottingham College, who had a very famous and successful dispute. Uh, and she now works for UCU um, at Nottingham University. So she's got really good uh, cross-sectoral uh, perspective on strike school and organising for power and what how it can be used on the ground. So over to you, Kitty. coming up on screen yeah hi hi everybody uh, it, it's great to be here and, and talk to you all and try and relate strike school to um, my experience of trade union activism um, I've been an activist for nearly 40 years now uh, initially in NATFI um, and now in UCU um, during that time obviously over 40 years there's been an awful lot of um, actions that I've been involved in um, and as uh, Janet uh, just mentioned uh, the latest one was the um, the action that we took in, in Nottingham College, um, which was a resounding success. The interesting thing today is that we're working in a climate where um, the anti-TU laws are uh, very much against us, um, and we are struggling to get our, un our voices heard and to be successful as trade unionists. Over, over the time that I've been an activist, obviously I've picked up um, quite a lot of trade unions tricks and tricks of the trade and um, and learned how to organize and manage um, a branch and members and so on but those things were things that you kind of pick up along the way and the what's happened with strike school is that um, I was able to see some parallels with what I was already doing um, but also um, a huge amount of growth from that so things that, that um, we did at the branch at Nottingham College, um, things like um, mapping the branch and um, getting the, uh, the doing the structure tests and um, and all of those things that you'll be taken through, we were doing in 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 our own way. Um, the get the vote out um, structure given by UCU is is also a part of that and 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 is very similar to what. Um, 
you'll be doing when you're mapping for um, your voting when you when you have a ballot. So some of those skills were already there. Some of those um, activities and, and experiences were already in place. So why would organising for power be good um, is, is a good question. And, and really, the, the reason is because it expands on that experience. It, it, um, it allows you to become um, more confident in what you're doing and build on uh, and improve what you're doing already. Uh, so it gives you those tools, those tools that, that you need to be able to um, build your branch, to be able to find your activists, to motivate your activists, uh, to get the networks together. Um, it builds that camaraderie um, that, that you need. So even within strike school, um, there's a camaraderie that, that builds up with all of those people globally that you're working with. Um, as well as the camaraderie within your branch, which is hugely important. And it gives you a purpose. It provides you with the structure and purpose to be able to go and build your, your branch. So what we found with our Nottingham College dispute was that we it, it was almost like we had the luxury of a crisis with, with which we were able to really motivate people. Um, but it's important to be doing that long before um, and although try as we might to do that before we had a crisis, um, we didn't have the tools that, that organising for power would have given us had we had those in place beforehand. And it's very easy to fall into the trap as um, a branch chair or secretary or membership secretary, um, as an activist within the union, to think that it's just so much easier to do the job yourself, just get the job done yourself because it takes so much longer to explain to somebody what to do and to follow it up and so on. But actually that delegation is exactly what builds the branch. So delegating out, having those conversations, having the one-to-ones, having getting your, your base group of activists um, there and and active, not just simply saying it, saying I am I'm an active member because there are so many people who say they're active and actually don't understand that that requires a lot of work. Um, so doing all of those things are, are, are so important and organising for power does give you the structure for doing that. There are differences however in the way that organising for power um, presents things. So um, it's very much an, um, an American um, kind of culture in there. Um, and the differences, because you're covering so many different sectors, means that you do have to try and narrow it down and pick out the bits that are useful to you within your branch and within education. Um, so there are cultural differences, there are those kind of organisational differences, and there are obviously some political differences as well. The lessons that I think we learnt through the dispute and through the school um, were build on our current good practice, but but make it better. Meticulous record keeping of who you're talking to and what it is you're trying to do. Um, delegation, 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 and following up that delegation. And understanding that there isn't an easy route. There's no There's no quick fix. It takes a lot of hard work. The Nottingham College dispute, um, I think was successful partly because we'd already got some of those ideas embedded, but also because we we worked on the principle of joyful militancy. Um, we wanted to make sure that that every member felt involved and didn't feel downheartened, even though it took us sixteen days of strike action to win our dispute. Um, and that joyful militancy really drew people in, and it was part of our structure test was how we could involve people in, in various things. An important structure test before we took the ballot and before we actually went on strike, um, and people talk about petitions and things like that, um, but we used uh, lunchtime protests. Could we get people out of the building, onto the streets, holding banners and kicking up a fuss, even before we actually started any industrial action? The other thing that helped us win our dispute, um, just moving away from, from um, organising for power a little bit, was that uh, we, we ensured that we were visible. We got our message across, not only to the members and between the members and got them talking, but we got it across to the institution we were fighting. 
we got it across to the students and via the students to the parents and to other stakeholders. And crucially, we got it across to the media. Um, and because we were joyful, because we had a very visual presence, we were an absolute gift to the media and they loved us and they gave us a lot of coverage, including in private eye, which was quite interesting. So the only other thing I think I would say is that um, it, it's important, we were, had the luxury of a crisis, um, but really that needs to, the groundwork needs to be being done now. Mapping the branch, understanding density, supporting your reps after you've recruited them, training those reps up, in my role at the moment as a paid employee of UCU, um, I have the luxury now of spending quite a bit of time on that. Um, and that's exactly what I'm doing at the University of Nottingham with um, the person who used to be secretary of the same branch with me when we had that dispute. He is now job sharing this job with me. So we've carried on that partnership. And that's quite a crucial thing to say as well, because you need to have somebody that you're working with that you feel you work well with, that you trust. Um, that you play to each other's strengths, that you support each other. And so joining Organising for Power as a group is probably the best way of ensuring that you build those, those smaller relationships, those core groups that will allow you to, to, to be successful um, when it comes to any kind of industrial action. That's all I've got to say for now, but I'm very happy to answer any questions later on. Thanks. Well, thank you so much, Kitty. That was really interesting um, and a great take on, on what we're talking about. And it, it just struck me as you were talking um, that you were basically describing the title of Jane McAlevey's last book, No Shortcuts, you know, and ultimately that is it. We've got to do the groundwork and we've got to do it well. Um, so that was a brilliant contribution. Thank you very much. Um, just a reminder to everyone, we have had one question through, but if there are, are others, please do put them in the comments, um, either on YouTube or on Facebook or on, or on the Twitter, um, and we'll take those at the end. Um, Okie dokie, right, moving on to our final speakers. We're absolutely delighted to be joined by two activists from the National Education Union, our sister union. Uh, we've got Beth, who is from Little Ilford School. And we've also got Tom, who is here representing the Bristol branch of the NEU. And they're going to talk to us about their perspective uh, of organising for power and, and using it on the ground. So I'll hand over to them. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, um, everyone, for having me. Nick, um, are you able to share my slides, please? I'm hoping so. Um, fabulous. Thanks, Nick. Um, so I am a rep, an NEU rep at uh, Little Ilford School in Newham in East London. Um, and unlike Kitty, um, had no experience in the role um, of being a rep or really having um, huge union involvement. So three um, completely new reps um, kind of... Um, thrown into a situation in which um, the school was being forced into an expansion that 82% of staff did not want, um, even before the pandemic. Um, so quite um, a baptism of fire, as it were, into um, the world of, um, of the union. Um, strike school was something that we... Um, did very early on in our um, union careers, but ultimately was fundamental um, to rebuilding relationships within the union group, um, having been away physically from um, other members from such a long time, um, but also reuniting as a group um, and organising for change. Um, so this is a picture of us on our um, picket. We had eight days of strike action, um with over 50 uh, members on the picket every day um, and we have um just over 100 teachers um so when we're talking about density we did have the majority on board and all of the momentum all of the um success of our industrial action um was largely down to strike school um next slide please nick 
Um, so I am going to repeat a little bit of, um, of what Kitty um, spoke about in terms of visibility and identity, because one of the fundamental things beyond um, rebuilding those those relationships, having those conversations and getting people on board, as well as identifying those key um, leaders within our group, um, was thinking about how we could be visible. Um, so hearing from so many different um, unions across the globe was fantastic because you could just cherry pick all of the amazing ideas um, in terms of um, what colour to wear, or what songs to sing. Um, every member of our of our union had a different idea to bring. So we ended up with our own dance, um, our own song, a playlist. Um, next slide, please, Nick. Um, the song that we handed out to uh, passers by. Um, next slide, please. as well and all of that um, was really crucial in communicating our message to students um, to parents and the wider community um, as well another part of strike school that was really fundamental to our campaign was um, reaching out to the wider community as i say we had very limited experience of um, the union and of organizing in general um, so there was um, a lot of discussion around use of social media, um, talking to the wider community, and actually the pandemic worked in our favour in that regard because we were able to use um, Zoom to um, talk to community members, to talk to local councillors. Um, and we really only understood that and, and the best ways to reach out um, because of Strike School. Um, so it was about really bringing our whole group together, taking everyone with us every step of the way um, and making sure that we we carried on that momentum throughout. Next slide, please. So our campaign has been very successful so far. Um, we had eight days of industrial action before Christmas. Um, and were able to achieve 300, sorry, three quarters of a million pounds um, in extra funding from um, Newham Council um, for the expansion, which we haven't achieved, um, we haven't halted yet, um, but we have achieved huge gains um, and have had lots of interest from the press um, in terms of making sure that our school is a humane, um, safe um, environment for our students um, and really none of that would have been possible um, without strike school without having um, the practical um, implementation of coaching conversations with members with having those structure tests um, with identifying um, leaders within our group that could take responsibilities within the group as a whole, but also in this particular industrial action um, and keep that momentum going over eight days, over very, very cold winter days, um, stood outside on the street um, in Newham and also continuing into the next stages of our campaign um, where we consider whether we continue with our industrial action. Um, and as, as well as that, um, kind of exercising leverage that we've created as a group and what that means for our workplace and, um, you know, an increasingly uncertain educational climate. So um, couldn't recommend it more. Um, I wish I could do it again. Um, but thank you all so much for listening. Um, as I say, any questions, I'm happy to take at the end. Thanks, Nick, for sharing those slides. Thank you. That was so interesting to hear from a completely different perspective and how successful it could be. I loved the pictures as well. That was just so inspiring. Thank you very much. And um, again, really interesting to hear from 
you know, kind of self-admittedly not as experienced as what as what Kitty was describing. And, you know, that's an important message as well. You know, you don't already have to know this stuff. Um, but if you turn up and you can be inspired by other people, then, then that is great. So thank you again for your time, Beth. That was brilliant. Right, I'll hand over to Tom next, who is from uh, Bristol, NEU. Hello, everyone. Solidarity from Bristol. Uh, thank you, Janet. Um, yeah, so I'll give you a very quick overview of what's been happening kind of in Bristol in the last year. It's obviously been the year of COVID, but I think personally it has felt like the year of organising for power, the year of strike school as well. So obviously the, the, the pandemic really kicked off in March and it was soon after that that was kind of the, the first run of the remote strike school run by Jane McAlevey um, and the Rosa Lux Institute. Um, and a few members of um, our um, district in Bristol uh, were involved in that and they, they did the strike school. Off of the back of that, um, we then approached um, our training organiser in the NEU, John Hegarty, to run a kind of an NEU specific version of the strike school over three sessions with reps in Bristol and um, our neighbouring district, district, sorry, South Gloucestershire. And we had maybe about 20 to 25 reps um, in that training session. Uh, and what was particularly powerful about that training was that many of the reps were new reps and um, new to the NEU themselves. Um, when COVID kind of hit us in March in Bristol, we saw a huge increase, understandably, in in interest in the NEU and we increased our rep density by about a third. So we had a significant number of new reps, new to the role, um, not feeling particularly confident and operating in workplaces where in many cases there had not been a union culture for, for years, in some cases decades. So a big part of our role um, from the very beginning of the pandemic on top of obviously defending our members, keeping our members, um, students, their families and the wider community safe uh, was to kind of build power um, in particular in workplaces where we haven't really had much power recently. Um, so we had our own uh, version of the strike school uh, with, as I said, about 20, 25 reps. Um, me and some other NEU colleagues were then very, very lucky to work with Jane McAlevey and um, trade unionists from Los Angeles, from the United Teachers of Los Angeles, uh, to run some training with um, education trade unionists in, in California. And I'll urge you to read um, the C.J. McAlevey's book, No Shortcuts. Her most recent book, A, Collect a Collective Bargain, has a very inspiring chapter on the UTLA, United Teachers of Los Angeles, and their kind of their campaign to firstly take control of their union, turn their union into a strike ready organising union. Um, and then to organise a successful strike in 2019. Um, so in terms of where kind of I think the NEU should go and I hope uh, our district in Bristol goes is, is to kind of follow that kind of that model of, of fighting trade unionism as exemplified by, by the UTLA. Um, so that training session which happened over the summer was also incredibly informative and um, has affected, I'd say, in a really fundamental and transformative way how I do trade unionism, how I how I talk to members, uh, the choice of language I use. Um, so for example, Nick talked about them, the conversation you learn to do on um, in the Organising for Power training called a six step structured organising conversation. Just before I joined this call, I was speaking to, to a rep and something I've started to do now is I write down what the six steps are before I have this conversation and it's always just something in the forefront of my mind in every conversation I have to make sure everything I do within the union is purposeful and is designed to move people and build power and get members to feel a bit more confident or a bit more up for taking action or up for having conversation with their colleagues in the workplace and I think really to really centre them in what a union is um, and to really I suppose it might seem a bit strange to some people, but to appeal to that their self-interest and, and their material needs and to get reps and, and our members and, and workers more generally to understand that 
if they want to see their own lives improve, their working life, their, their entire life get better, they have to be active participants in that change. Um, so we, to go back to Bristol, um, obviously, if you can remember back to December, there was calls for schools to close early. I think it was Greenwich um, Council tried to close their schools early. So using some of the strike school techniques, um, for example, the use of structure tests and kind of really being methodical. Um, we had a campaign in Bristol to demand and push for an early closure of schools in the city and with our colleagues in South Gloucestershire as well. And unsurprisingly, we were we were unsuccessful in that. We our appeal was directed at the council, but our um, our city is incredibly fragmented with a, a lot of academies and lots of different people controlling schools. So it was a very difficult campaign without one figurehead to target. But what was really instructive and powerful about that campaign was that it allowed um, our branch and our activists and our reps to really see where we did have power in the workplace, i.e. where there were workplaces where significant numbers of members were putting their name to public collective letters that were being sent to their local councillors, being sent to the mayor, being sent most powerfully, I think, to their bosses, to their employer, to the CEOs of multi-academy trusts, in many cases very powerful, wealthy wealthy individuals and as I say in December we didn't get an early closure of schools but the crucial point of that and about this whole purpose of what strike school is which is about um, as other speakers have said building power is that we had built some power there and we could see where we were strong and where we needed to do more work and when January came around again if you can remember and our national union our general secretaries Kevin Courtney and Mary Belstead instructed members to invoke section 44 of health and safety law to refuse to work in an unsafe workplace that's when kind of the structure tests and the power that we built really began to to kick in and we we, we traced where in bristol we were getting members to put their name um two letters to say they were going to refuse to work and it's obviously very difficult to pinpoint the effect the NEU had in that decision in that very, very rapid government U-turn in the beginning of January was. But I think the interesting thing around that and why I think we did have a significant impact as the NEU was that a few days later, the um, Secretary of State for Education, Gavin Williamson, just stood up in Parliament and outright lied and said that the NEU had um, revoked its instruction or its advice to its members to, um, to invoke Section 44 when that was absolutely not the case. And to link it all back to strike school, um, one of our new reps who um, was a rep in a primary school which didn't have much of a union culture, a rep called Noel, um, she did our strike school training and using the leadership identification aspect um, of the training that Nick identified, she had identified the leader and she was telling me she was very, very nervous that only a very small number of of her colleagues had put their name publicly to the Section 44 letter. So Section 44 was not collective action. People had to, as individuals, put their name to a letter that their boss, their employer was going to see, saying, I'm not coming into work, it's not safe. And Noelle was very concerned that only a small number of colleagues had done that in her workplace. But she had identified the leader. She got someone in the workplace who was respected by their colleagues involved in the union. And this, um, what McAleaver would call organic leader, was going around talking to their colleagues and got their colleagues to to put their name to the Section 44 letter. And that school was closed. And that that action replicated across the city and across the country is what um, forced that government U-turn to close schools when schools definitely should not have been open because COVID was running wild. Um, so yeah, I think where we are at now and kind of the other things I have taken away from strike school, I think, as I've said before, it, it has really transformed how I think and how I, how I do union stuff. And I think it is an ongoing process. It's not a quick fix. I mean, the name of Mac, uh, McAlevey's book is No Shortcuts. There are no shortcuts to this, but I see it really much as very much an ongoing process where I try every day to do something which is kind of building power in, in, in a workplace in in our union because ultimately that's what's gonna that's what's gonna lead to the change we need we need in our lives and in our country ultimately, which is what it's all about. So it's about building power. I think that's everything covered. Thank you.
Absolutely brilliant, Tom. Thank you very much. Uh, I was kind of doing my little cheerleader bit from this chair, but I suppose nobody could see me, so there was no point. Um, completely agree um, with especially the last stuff that you were just talking about. And, you know, hearing you talk about things like the structured organising conversations and the need to practice them, you know, that's exactly how I feel as well, you know, that well, it does give you an opportunity, the course, to practice them, but we have to keep practicing them yeah, until they become second nature. So um, thank you to all of the speakers. I think that was just absolutely brilliant and so interesting. Um, we're gonna, we've had a couple of questions through, so you've got a little bit of time if you want to jump in there with a question, if you just put it in the comments on, on whatever you're watching this on. Um, but we'll just take the ones that we've had so far. Um, the first one um, is a practical question from Greg. Um, we like a practical question, Greg. How many people do you need for a group? And I think Nick Hardy is probably the right person to bring in to answer that question. Oh, can't hear you, Nick. Sorry, had to ask simple, at one simple point. Simple solution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to keep the answer secret by muting myself. But um, yeah, so it depends actually what union you're in, um, Greg. So if you're basically if you signed up um, using the like public registration form that the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation has, that if you, if you just Google and find their website, you'll find it there. Um, it actually requires you to sign up in a group of 10. But if you're a UCU or NEU member, it works differently from that because what we're doing both unions we've got our own different internal registration process where we're signing up members ourselves and then at the end of it we'll send all those names off to rose luxembourg so my understanding is that in any you um you can actually sign up as an individual and then you'll be sorted into groups by the neu um later in ucu we've actually made it so with our registration form you do have to have a group as i mentioned it can be a group as small as two but it has to be a group um there is an option if if it's just you to be for, for us to put you on a reserve list um and try and place you in a in a larger group but please do try to sign up as a group as big as you can um, with other UCU members, whether it's from your branch, your region, um, other people you know in your sector, um, try to sign up in the biggest group you can because the, honestly, the bigger the better. The more of you doing it, the more you will learn together. You'll be able to catch each other up with bits that you miss and you'll be able to then go on um, and start applying what you've learned in your workplace together. And I think that's really important. Uh, the last thing um, which I want to say about um, groups really is that don't kind of don't worry too much like if um, say you don't know anyone else in your branch uh, they might well be sending a group so it's worth getting in touch with your branch and seeing if they're sending anyone um, but it's actually fine say let's say you know, I know there's a group that's considering taking part that's um, postgraduate research students who are activists across the higher education sector who might be interested in doing it together. And if you want to form a group on that kind of basis, then that's fine too. I think that's everything. That's really useful, Nick. Thank you. Um, it wasn't as simple a solution as, as we thought, but yeah, um, really important that you, you work with people that you're going to then be able to put, put that stuff into practice with. Um, and we learned that from the first one. So um, the other question that we've had through, and you may not be aware that Nick is all singing, all dancing here. He's presenter, he's question taker, he puts it up on the screen. Amazing. Um, so the next one, <laughs> right on cue. Sam says that it sounds really good, but uh, is it highly time consuming to do it effectively? Um, I'm going to say a few words on this as someone who has facilitated the course, and then I'm going to invite our other speakers to see if anyone wants to add anything. So in answer to your question, Sam, yes, um, it is time consuming. Uh, and that depends on whether or not you're talking about the course itself or putting those principles into practice. That's easy for you to say. Um, but, you know, ultimately, the way I see it is 
we're already burning ourselves out. You know, we're already busy. This is about putting mechanisms in place to ultimately save time and energy. Um, the whole theme and the whole idea is about empowering members and other reps to share the load to better effect. Um, and it's about moving from a servicing model of trade unionism to an organizing model, um, which is, you know, what Kitty was saying earlier about, you know, and I've been there as a, as a senior branch rep to just say, do you know what? I'm just going to do that myself. It's just easier. And that is literally the worst thing that I could do because ultimately nobody's ever going to learn or feel empowered to do these things unless unless we build a culture whereby that is second nature. So it's ultimately about building to a situation where it's all hands on deck and all working together as one as one unified, um, I was going to say lump, but that's not a very nice word, <laughs> one unified block. So yes, it's time consuming, but totally worth it. Um, I'm going to see whether or not any of our other speakers want to say anything on this question because it's a great question and it's, a, it's you know, we want to be straight with you as well as um, as well as selling how great it is. Um, Nick, do you want to bring in anyone else who wants to answer? So brilliant. Tom, go ahead. Hi. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Thank you, Janet. Uh, yeah, I'll just echo what, what Janet said. Um, the course itself, it, it is an investment of time. Um, but it's definitely worthwhile doing it. And I would absolutely uh, make, please, please do it in full. Don't skip a session because everything it does link and it does all build on the previous session. And it is totally and completely transformative. It has, as I've said before, totally changed how, how I approach, how I, how I do trade unionism. And I think, yeah, the reason why we are, we are on this call now and why we are in trade unionists is because we want to build our power as, as working people and we want to see a better world and I think that is obviously that is an investment of time but I think Kitty hit the nail on the head earlier talking about it should be a joyful experience and I think if you're doing trade unionism you should be getting more out of it than you are putting in it should be something that's inspiring and, and is energizing and I think yeah I'd say absolutely is, is, a, is an investment of time this course organizing for power but I think yeah um, I first first did it about a year ago and I've been involved similar to Janet as a facilitator and it's a year later and I'm still still banging the drum for it and extolling its virtues it's definitely it's definitely worth doing and I think it is really heartening when you do apply the principles you learn because there's nothing fancy or strange about it as pretty long-standing effective proven principles to apply it's quite simple and straightforward principles but they do work and seeing it work in action seeing when you are kind of having conversation you're moving people and you get you and in many cases you might be asking people to do things that they think are quite strange or difficult I mean ultimately what you're going to be asking a lot of people to do is to effectively challenge their boss which is something they may have never done before never even thought about doing before so i think yeah there are challenges in it but i think the rewards are definitely outweigh the challenges brilliant tom thank you i think we're both fully signed up members of the uh, the old strike school fan club so uh shame we don't get a badge just saying um thank you for that um beth do you want to come in and, uh, and add anything there from your perspective yeah sure so i just want to echo what you have said Janet and, and what Tom said as well I think the investment in time is absolutely worth it I think um, one concrete example would be as um, a new rep um, having those conversations those organizing conversations with people um, can become that can become a very long and drawn out um, experience in which people um, want to express all of the issues that they're experiencing within the workplace to you rather than having a constructive conversation that leads to change um, through individual and collective action whether that's signing a petition or doing a lunchtime strike um, or talking to someone else in their team and actually just that six-step organizing conversation uh, model has completely changed um, the way that I speak to members, not that I've been doing it for very long <laughs> before, um, but just that alone, I think has just saved so much time and made the way that I do have those conversations with members um, so much more productive and effective and positive. 
I had to remember to unmute, unmute myself then. It wasn't a dramatic pause. <laughs> um, thank you, Beth. That's great. Another really, really important perspective. Couldn't agree more. Um, right, I'm going to see if Kitty wants to come in and add anything. Hi. Yeah, it, it is a really good question. Um, it is time consuming. Trade unionism is time consuming. Um, and the more you can delegate, as I said earlier, the better. Uh, and it is so easy to fall into that trap of not delegating because you've got so much to do as a trade unionist, never mind what you're having to do on top of your job, which is where you're already doing way over the hours that you paid for. Um, but, but that's the point, isn't it, that, that we have to be challenging those things. And in order to challenge, we've got to be able to put the time in. And so, yeah, there is no easy fix. It is time consuming. Um, but as the other speakers have said, the, the rewards are immense. Um, and it, the more you can get other people involved, the less you have to do personally. Although, to be fair, once you've actually put yourself in the position of doing that work and getting the rewards of doing it, it, it feels great. It just feels great to be able to, to be that effective and see a branch um, develop and become militant uh, joyfully. Um, and so, it, yeah, the, the strike school is, is time consuming, um, but it does have a time limit on it. Um, what doesn't have a time limit on it is, is how much you do as a trade unionist. And the more time that you can invest in that, the more the trade union is going to stro become stronger and the more rewards you're gonna reap from that. So yeah, I'd love to be able to say there's a shortcut there. And I'd love Sam to be able to say that, you, you know, w once you've got this under your belt, you can sit back, it'll be all right. Cause it won't, you, it, it's a lifelong commitment. It's almost a full-time job in its own right. Um, and it, it, but it's worth it. You just have to bite the bullet. And if you believe in it, you have to get on with it. Brilliant, Kitty. Thank you again. Um, and I did have an incredibly joyful time on your picket line at Nottingham College. It was a real privilege. Um, and to see this stuff in action is, is amazing. And reminds us why we're doing what we're doing. Um, so before I close the session, I'll just bring Nick back, back in for a final word. Yeah, just a final thought, really. I, I thought the example Tom gave was a really good um, answer to that question about about time and so on, because the you know the kind of organic leader that your rep in in Bristol had identified and was then able to get everyone everyone to sign up to the Section Forty Four walkout. Right? It's because if you can learn to identify that one person who can bring lots of other people with them. That's that saves time. It doesn't increase the amount of time that you're putting in. It saves time, and that's true whether you're trying to build a branch and get people to join the union. Whether you're, you know, if you're trying to, if you want to put a really effective strike together, the more people you have on strike, the quicker your management is going to cave in negotiations. So it's really about you know methods that will ultimately um, save you time rather than uh, increasing the amount of time you take that was all thank you nick that's great and um you know so much for us to us to think about and hopefully lots of positives for people to take away and um, i would really like to thank all of our speakers um, and of course pre for her excellent interpreting um, and you know you for being here really and watching and engaging with it and i hope it's inspired you as much as it's inspired all of us um, to get involved with it so don't hesitate do your registration form straight after this and uh, i'll see you on the other side cheers everyone <laughs>